welcome back to my channel. This time we're gonna do a little bit of a different thing because as you guys know I asked you a couple of weeks ago about a few questions that I can answer in a Q&A and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So the reason why I wanted to do a Q&A in the first place is so that we get to know each other a little bit more and I think that's really important and I guess we're just gonna get started. So the first question that I have here um, is where do you recommend beginners start when it comes to sewing your own clothes? And I mean, I guess I can answer that really quickly because I used to be a beginner too in uh, university when I started to learn sewing and pattern making and everything. And we approached the whole process by basics. So a basic skirt. Then we moved on to a basic dress fat pattern and so on and so on. So I guess the easiest would be a skirt. Once you have a basic pattern to your size, um, it's pretty easy to continue from that. When did you decide you wanted fashion design to be your career? It's not my career actually. So I started off um, fashion design uh, when I was 17. That's when I started to study. I didn't have this dream of studying fashion design and become a fashion designer, other than a lot of other students in my class actually had. I started to look for universities and courses and classes that I am interested in, and that range from arts to music to teaching to anything and to fashion design. So I just gave it a go and I just happened to get the spot. Um, and that's how I, I came into the whole fashion design thing. And the reason why I'm saying it's not my career is because I continued with my master's in media and communication management, which is, you know, a totally different thing. <laughs> and now I'm doing my PhD in media economics. So that is actually my career path. And I aim to go to uh, teach basically in a, at a university. That's my main goal and that's what I'm heading for. <laughs> I'm just doing this here because I love sharing my creations and the process with you guys. I'm just really glad that I found an audience here on YouTube who is interested in my stuff. How do you decide on what fabric to use when making clothes? So there are two approaches, I would say. The one where you go by rules. <laughs> and the one where you go by design. You know, different fabrics and different wefts and different materials used to weave have different properties. So, for example, you would use a woolen coat for winter because it keeps you warm. You wouldn't use a linen material for a coat because that just wouldn't keep you warm. So there's stuff like this, but then there's also the design approach where you just say, I don't care and use whatever material you think fits the design the best. And I think the best way is to combine both. So you have like some sort of property that is fitting your thing that you're actually making and also design wise it fits. So. That's basically how I would go by this. So I would check what type of clothing I am making. So for example, a really nice flowy dress. And then I would say, okay, so I want flowy. That means I can't have something thick, but then also I don't wanna be so hot all the time. So I'm not gonna use any synthetic material. And then you come, you know, you narrow down uh, the whole um, fabrics and materials down to, I don't know, silk or viscose or stuff like that. And then you can choose what you want for your own design by feeling it, by looking how it falls, by pricing. That's also a very, very big thing because fabrics are expensive. A lot of people always think that making your own clothes is so much more cheap, but it's not. It's so much more expensive, just as a side note. But it's fun and you have all the liberty to do whatever you want. So that's a really nice pro. How long have you been sewing and what got you interested? So I've been not sewing in particular, but being artsy and crafty my whole life. Like I started drawing when I was three or stuff like that and I was always doing that and then it continued into um, crafting stuff. I was really interested in crocheting and knitting and eventually it just came down to sewing because you know the small things and pieces I knitted or crocheted were just not enough anymore. I just wanted to do stuff for myself and then it continues with the story I told you before that I just happened to get the spot at the fashion university. 
and that basically started my complete like my whole interest in making your own stuff and being able to design whatever you want and whatever you desire so i would guess that was when i was 17 so seven years ago oh god i'm old <laughs> who and what are your major fashion influences i um, read that question um, a few days ago and i i didn't know how to answer it so i actually thought about this answer for a long time and it's interesting because i don't really have a major influence like i don't have this one person that i admire and that i love and that i get influenced by a lot because i know how the design process works so basically for every collection that you see on the runway or in stores you have a theme that you get inspired by and that you pick elements out of which you're gonna put in one way or the other onto a government in silhouettes, in details, in fabrics, in colors, anything that you can think of. And of course, every designer has their style, the Chanel jacket that you see in every Chanel fashion show, or the Dior hourglass silhouette, the Gucci print, you know. So, but these are just like small parts of the whole collection. So that's why I, I am not drawn to one particular designer. I am more drawn towards a collection you know? So I love um, that one Dior collection where they took a lot of inspiration from... I don't know the word in English! I'm sorry guys, I'm not a... I'm, English is not my first language, so please be nice to me when I don't know words or when I stumble across it. But I have my handy translator here, so I'm gonna translate it really quickly. Fencing, you know? So they had like a big influence by that sports and that's actually um, a big influence I, I had for my graduation collection. So that one I particularly like or the um, Prada Fall 2020. I really, really like that. And actually for the next video that I'm doing, I'm going to redo a jacket by Prada in my own style because I really, really, really like it. And I hope my version is going to look really nice. So. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> I'm gonna go over to my Instagram because I asked you on my Instagram too. So by the way, if you haven't followed me already on Instagram, the link is down in the description. I would very, very much appreciate it because I'm gonna do stuff like this where I ask you guys on Instagram. I just had um, a question spree basically on my Instagram stories about a design choice for that Prada jacket where I wasn't sure what I wanted to do and you helped me out quite a lot. So thank you guys for that. Link is down in the description. I much appreciate it. Um, so there's a German question. In welchem Bereich machst du deinen Doktor? I'm doing my PhD in media economics, as I already said, but in particular, I'm focusing on influencing uh, social media and its development phenomena that you can see on social media like the star phenomena and stuff like that and actually what i'm doing at the moment is i am analyzing how influencers especially travel influencers are impacted by a pandemic kannst du ein tutorial zeigen wie du die jacke nähst und welche materialien man braucht uh, yes of course i'm gonna film a youtube video for that product jacket of course here on my youtube channel so just stay tuned for that oh this is really nice you're so pretty why um where i guess why are is your <laughs> where is your family from um that's a funny thing because like i'm german my family is also german like i don't i don't know uh, i guess there are some influences like you know all over europe somewhere in my family i don't particularly know it but i've <laughs> gotten a lot of questions like in real life person to person are you this are you from here um, I remember specifically one guy at the gas station. <laughs> it's actually pretty, pretty mean, but it's in the moment it was just really funny. We were at the gas station uh, buying a pizza or water, something small, and um, my best friend would pay in cash. And they had this machine where you get the cash back automatically. And I've never seen that before. So I was like, oh, that's cool. I've never seen that before. And the cashier, the guy at the gas station, just said bluntly, oh yeah, you don't have stuff like that in China, do you? <laughs> thinking about it now, like, what the hell? <laughs> what? <laughs> and thinking back at it now, I just have to laugh. And then another time, it was recently actually, a person asked me if I am from Afghanistan. I've had a person in London ask me if I'm from Azerbaijan. Also, side note, these countries are so particular. Like, it's not 
you know, you look like a group of people. No, it's like you look like a person from this and that country. It's so weird to me. I don't know. <laughs> I've had people ask me if I am Japanese, Chinese, Korean, um, anything that you could think of. So it's really funny. But no, I'm just German. Boring. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 25. I just turned 25 and September the 2nd is my birthday. How much, this is a really important question, which I've already mentioned a little bit about it. How much would you say one project uh, costs approximately? That's, um, that varies. It depends what material you use, what thing you sew and so on and so on. If I need to like say one thing, I would take the last project as an example. So my trench coat, you can click on the eye right here if you want to check it out. You basically measure by the length of the coat or whatever piece and then plus the arm so plus the sleeves since i was doing a trench coat which was oversized which had multiple layers on top of each other i took about four meters for that and that was a really nice viscose cotton polyester blend i think which costs about 15 euros per meter so you can do the math and then with all the small parts plus lining i would say approximately about 150 euros where did you go to fashion school and what did you do afterwards educationally. I went to the Academy of Fashion and Design here in Munich. That's actually also why I moved to Munich and why I'm living now in Munich and I fell in love with Munich so I'm still here after after all these years. Which I would recommend if you're really into the making side of fashion design, like if you really really want to learn how to do pattern making, how to sew and how to do Photoshop and Illustrator and all those programs, I would hi highly recommend that. If you really want to go to like a deep dive into fashion design and design itself, I would probably recommend you to search for another uni. Not that I'm um, complaining about it or that I'm saying that it's bad because it's not. Like you get that side too. You get a full on uh, fashion design class there. But I think there are more and better options for contemporary fashion design than um, that school. But I'm, I'm happy that I went there. I cannot complain. I learned so much, especially in terms of sewing and pattern making, which for me was the biggest priority because I wanted to learn the craftsmanship behind it and also I'm not like I never went into the study with the goal of becoming a full-on fashion designer that was never my goal so for what I am doing right now that was perfect if you really want to be like a fashion designer and doing collections like three collections every year and so on I would probably search for something either in, in France and in Italy or in um, London or also like Antwerpen in Belgium or Amsterdam in, in um, the Netherlands. If you're in Europe, obviously. If you're, if you're not in Europe, I don't know. <laughs> Any tips on furnishing my sewing room? That is a really, really good and nice and perfect question because as you guys might have seen on my community tab, I am actually gonna move in a couple of months or weeks. I don't know, it's not, not decided yet. And I will be furnishing my sewing room. So I'm gonna film that for YouTube too and I'm gonna have a lot of tips and tricks and a design and everything for you guys. So stay tuned for that. What is your clothing size? So in general, just to point it out, I don't have any problem with you guys asking how much I weigh, how tall I am, what's my clothing, clothing size and so on and so on because I know why. If you have a similar body type like me, then it makes sense to ask because then you can go by all the measurements that I tell you in the video. So I get that. And my size is, it, it, it varies between a 34 and a 36 European size. I'm gonna put it right here, what it is in US size. <laughs> What's your favorite thing you've ever sewed? That's a good question because I've done a lot of things. I don't know how to answer that question because there are two ways of understanding this again. Like favorite thing in terms of you wore it the most or favorite thing as in I'm so proud of this because I would have two answers. The thing that I'm most proud of would probably be um, a <laughs> raincoat from a collection that I did with my best friend. It's a raincoat completely made out of silicone, which was from head to toe, had a huge hood 
and I don't know if I have a picture. If I have a picture, I'll put it right here. First of all, we were thinking about making it hot and then merging it together, which didn't work because silicone has a really, really, really high melting point. And then we're thinking about like sticking it together, but it also didn't work because silicone doesn't stick to anything. Like that's the thing of silicone, right? So we had to sew it together. And I was so scared that it would rip like right in the middle, like when I was doing, I don't know, pockets or whatever. And it had really intricate pockets and intricate shapes and stuff. So I was really, really, I am, I am really proud of this. Um, yeah, I did a leather jacket, which I wore it when I did it, when I made it a lot. And I'm really happy I made that, but I'm not wearing it anymore because it doesn't, I don't like it anymore that much. But at the time, I guess that was my favorite thing. I put a picture here if I find one. What's the best online store to buy fabric? That's a really good question because online stores themselves are a hit or a miss, I would say. So I really, really like this store called Swatch On, which is a Korean based store and they have the most amazing offer of all kinds of fabrics. Nice prices, nice quality or amazing quality, I would say. Like I, the last couple of um, pieces that I made are only from fabrics from that store. But the only downside is that you either have to be a member because it's actually a wholesale or you put a deposit of 500 euros on there or dollars, 500 dollars I think, and you basically pay off of those 500 dollars and that's just a safety thing for them um, that they can provide the prices and everything further. So that's the only downside, but for me, that's not a problem because I will definitely spend $500 a year on that store anyways. So that's what I do. I really like that. Other than that, I would just recommend you go to stores actually. And if you really want to do online buying, I recommend Swatch On. I really like that one. What would be approximately the time that you need for teaching a completely untalented sewing rookie? Amazed by the fact that trousers don't have to be too big or too short and sleeves too short and so on and so on. I guess the question is, can you make a series on uh, pattern making? The answer is probably yes. I don't know if I would like to make a pattern making only video. I don't know if that's quite what I want to do, but I think I can implement this teaching side into my YouTube videos as much as I've already done it. Like I showed you how to sew pockets. I guess in terms of pattern making, from start from zero, just with measurements, and then just doing the math and constructing a pattern. I can try to do something like that. Okay guys, I guess that was it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I could answer a few, a few questions. If you have any more questions, leave them down below. I'm happy to answer. Leave your suggestions and comments and feedback down below. As always, please click on the links down in my description. Follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. They're both linked down there. And of course, I would really, really appreciate it if you give this video a like and also if you subscribe to my channel. So I wish you have a great day, a great night whenever you're watching this and I'm gonna see you next time. Bye guys. Yeah. Yeah.